السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Dear viewers, welcome to our new series a very significant, a beautiful series an insightful series titled Youth Matters we have, alhamdulillah, this series for you, my dear youth. Youth matters, it has two meanings. Matters related to youth and youth really matters, which means youth is really important. You are indeed the game changer of this ummah, walhamdulillah. So inshallah, we shall take up this journey and beautifully organize it with a line of series of you know programs and episodes delving into different topics pertaining to the youth in general and talking about certain challenges certain you know problems with the objective approach in a way that inshallah this comes out for you O youth as a recipe for living insha'Allah bi'idhnillahi ta'ala because that comes from the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. We know <coughs> for sure that in any phase the most important element is goal setting and that's exactly the topic insha'Allah that we shall be talking about and before we get into it let me you know take the opportunity to introduce and to let them introduce themselves, our guests, our brothers. Uh, we have with us four brothers and I'll let you, uh, you know, uh, introduce yourself, Bism Bismillah. Bismillah, my name is Ahmad al Madana. I'm from Egypt. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. My name is Mustafa Abdul Qayyum, Egyptian as well. So we have Ahmad and we have Mustafa. I'm your brother Ahmad Nasser from uh, Brooklyn, New York, uh, the Mashallah. US. Mashallah. So we have three Ahmads already. <laughs> uh, my name is Idris and I'm from uh, Maryland, Washington, D.C. in the uh, U.S. Mashallah. Mashallah. So we have, we have uh, Ahmad, we have Mustafa, we have Ahmad again and we have Idris. Inshallah, let us have a quick <coughs> look at a small clip pertaining to what we are going to discuss in detail, Inshallah. The question which goes through all of our minds is what is success and what does success mean for me? Success is a word, it's a desire, something which we all want to achieve but what is it that we truly want to achieve? Success is encouraging yourself to find out the meaning of your life, not your purpose, we all know our purpose, but the meaning of our lives. What is the definition of who you are and what do you want to become? And we all know that we need to work for the Akhirah. That's a given. It's a given. That's the basics of who we are. But what are we supposed to do on this earth? Allah says in the Quran that we all have diverse goals. Which means success can mean different things to different people. I strongly encourage you to spend time by yourself and write out on paper who you are and what it is that you truly want to become. From the Quran in Surah Al-Asr, Allah actually gives us a base definition of success. Allah uses time as evidence to prove that we are all in loss. So the base meaning of success is using our time wisely. And when we can start managing ourselves and manage our days on a consistent basis, we will start to see the fruits of what success is. Don't get caught up with regards to what success truly is and how do I become successful, we must firstly figure out who we are and discover ourselves, then manage our time effectively and work hard every day to accumulate as many deeds as we can. And inshallah, Allah will give you success. Success will come to you if you prove to Allah that you are willing to work hard for it. My brothers and sisters, do you think that success comes without a goal setting? Let us 
get into this engagement, inshallah, with our brothers over here, success, everybody wants it. Mm. And we know that people who are successful, they are al always, you know, objective oriented. They have a base as a goal. If I ask you a question, people who has the goal, are they successful? Or those people who do not have the goals, they are successful. Of course, your answer would be the people who has a goal in their lives, who made their lives as pur purposeful, you know, they basically have, uh, you know, that success element in them, right? So uh, it is important for us to understand that, you know, success and goal setting goes hand in hand. In order for you to be successful, you need to have your goal very <coughs> clearly defined, right? Mm. <coughs> uh, I, I, I have a question. In this day and age of where it's very popular, we talk about goals, and it's actually sort of a trend that's going on in, in today's world. Like, uh, how do you think we should distinguish between this big trend and what goals should being a Muslim be? Because there's obviously a difference between the goals of what a non-Muslim might have and a, a goal that a Muslim might have. How do we distinguish? What should we do? And what do you think our goals should be as a Muslim? Great. Mm. So basically, you know, it all goes with the definition itself. You know, when we say what should be the goal of a Muslim, that means we are defining an identity, a mm. Muslim. When we say a Muslim, that means the one who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, walhamdulillah, the, the systematic way of life that Allah has blessed us with, obviously, he has actually helped us to define the goal in our lives. And that is the reason we get to know from the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a clear you know, goal in our lives. And this is a huge problem. I mean, if you yeah. ask people, you know, what's your goal? They, they just don't know. They just wander here and there and then uh, they end up doing nothing or they end up doing anything, right? Yeah. Why? Because there is no goal clearly defined in their lives. So what should be the goal of a Muslim or how the Muslim should perceive this goal setting, you know, aspect as a whole is indeed going back to the Quran, uh, you know, mm. at the first. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I did not create you, the men and the jinn, except that they should serve me. So Allah Rabbul Izza, he clearly defines why are we here. He gives us purpose. Why are we here? But ultimately, we, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to serve him ultimately. But many times people think that it's very much, you know, selective in a sense that, you know, you need to worship, you need to pray, you need to fast. And that's your limitation in terms of worship. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, Ibadah, worship, it is as wide as an ocean. And anything and everything that we do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an ibadah for us. So isn't it very open spectrum of, you know, investing whatever I smile at you, I do a worship, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal of the Muslim, ultimately the baseline, underlying statement, the mission statement should be iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. You know, this yeah. is the, the, the clear understanding that we need to have, especially the youth who puzzled in the current time. You know, they don't know what exactly my goal is. They think that the religion is only for the elders, right? Mm -hmm. And they think that, the, you know, Islam is not really, really relevant to me, mm -hmm. especially in the current age and time. Mm -hmm. so, so it all goes back to the fundamental understanding that we're here to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we see people, you know, they have goals in their lives that are either temporary in nature or they are just dunya limited. Allah, Rabbul Izza, he expands our vision and said that the ultimate goal of a Muslim, I call it MMS. It's MMS, the Muslim mindset. The Muslim mindset is number one, his vision is very clear. He wants to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately right now. That's the vision that I have. That's the vision that every Muslim youth and every Muslim should have. 
Number two, the mission. I am continuously striving for that, uh, you know, uh, attempt of getting that vision achieved. And then how do I get there? By the values which are from the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This mindset will help us to achieve that vision, carrying up this mission through the values of the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have a question mm. actually, what should be the, 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 the strategy of setting up goals in life? Right, as we see just a moment back in the clip, goals are something which are not in air. You know, people, they have a wish list, but that just stays in the mind. So as Muslims, we have full liberty of creativity in terms of setting up our goals, uh, you know, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. So the fundamental thing that we actually as a practice, as a step must do is number one, write down what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Write down in, you know, as an as a agenda of a Muslim, agenda of a Muslim. We need to write down that my goal is ultimately to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by pleasing in this world until my death. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَعْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord until certainty comes to you. So number one, we need to write down. So as a youth, you know, it attracts and invites our attention uh, where we talk about goal setting and we talk about the strategies of setting up the goals. So we know the goal, the goal is to serve Allah ultimately. But how do we set it up? By writing it down, number one. Number two, to understand and evaluate our own selves. Mm -hmm. How much I can actually do. Because a lot of times things happen, especially with the youth. Mm -hmm. They see a billionaire and they want to be like that. They see some celebrity, they want to be like him. So the fundamental thing that sets up in terms of goal setting is that once you write it down, evaluate yourself, know who you are, what you can do and what you can't do. Because Allah himself, he does not put the burden on us which we can't bear. So second thing is we need to know ourselves. And then third thing is to invest ourselves in that which we can do best. Which we can do best. So the, the idea is <laughs> where we actually set up the goals in a systematic way. Islam allows us to practice that in detail, right? And the final step is obviously to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us achieve that particular goal that we have set it up. You know, obviously as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he told us, whoever loves to meet me, loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves to meet him. Mm. So if we don't have that goal in this life very much clear that I want to basically, you know, uh, see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, when I die. That is my clear-cut vision. How many of us live with that vision, especially the youth? You know, in this scattered world where we have, you know, very much uh, deviation, fascination, you know, attraction all around us, we tend to lose that, that real value of why we are here for. So these are some of the steps that we can actually you know, uh, uh, do in order to basically achieve that goal that we actually kept for. And, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, when we have that, those steps, the fundamental requirement is we, we work towards it. We actually work towards it and practice it. Goals are just not written. It has to be practiced. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever He talks about Iman, He talks about Amal, right? Inshallah, viewers, we shall come back soon after a short break and continue our journey youth matters <laughs> assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome back to our session youth matters we were talking about some of the questions and we dealt with a couple of questions uh, Ahmed, you don't have any question on this particular topic? Actually, I did. Uh, I want to interject. I mean, it's easier said than done, and I want to play devil's advocate here be because <laughs> when we know what the pitfalls or challenges are, we could try to avoid them. So what are the challenges or pitfalls that the youth might face 
through setting up uh, goals. Mm. Right. Now, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, taking up the journey, understanding what goal is all about, putting up the strategy and setting it up, how the goal should be set, <laughs> we know for sure life is not easy. There are challenges, there are problems, there are obstacles on the way, especially when it comes to a Muslim goal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there are challenges that come especially from the big, big, big enemy, Shaitan. Allah defines his character to us and introduce himself, right? He is to you an open enemy. So obviously he's going to put, you know, as many challenges, problems, you know, obstacles on the way to set this beautiful and powerful goal for, the, for, for all of us. And what we see is the challenges usually when, you know, in my interactions with the youth, uh, uh, you know, in during the lectures, during the question and answer session, uh, from the university graduates to you know others as well they see a problem of focus there is a lack of focus you know when you don't have a clear focus in what you want to actually achieve that becomes a challenge for you if you're clearly you know uh, define yourself and being staying on that focus uh, and we know you know youths they have different you know deviations so the problem is focus, you know, the lack of focus. So, but obviously, uh, this focus can be achieved. You know, our youth, I always mention this, nobody is free from problem, right? Mm. Nobody is free from problems. Problems will be there, you know. It's important that how we actually deal with it. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with tests and these challenges are going to come. These are you know, mandatory to come. So, number one thing, what I experience with the interactions is the lack of focus, lack of knowledge. <laughs> you know, when you, when the youth do not have knowledge, they actually cannot stay on what they actually want to achieve, right? So, when they set it, the goal, you know, at the level where they actually know the systematic way of, uh, you know, setting up the goals, the first thing they face the focus second thing they have lack of knowledge so there is no motivation you know i'm sure uh, ahmed you might have uh, gone through this this kind of uh, phase right yeah, yeah actually i do believe uh, like if you fail to plan you plan to fail so but i just need to understand that how could i overcome the problems without affecting my religion without affecting my iman without affecting even the people who are surrounding me excellent i mean the kind of uh, uh, policy that we need to understand as Muslims is when there are problems, there are solutions as well. True. When there are challenges, we can definitely get recipes of uh, the solutions from the Quran and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we see there are definite and clear and simplified ways how we can actually overcome these challenges. The identification of the problems diagnose most of the problems yeah, right mm -hmm. yeah. so i'm sure uh, I, I, I was going to say I, in mentioning what you said about focusing and on and, and uh, i think a lot of times is you, it's, it's one of the biggest problem is that they don't identify the problem exactly you first you need to understand that th there is a problem true a lot of times you don't recognize that you have this issue because of peer pressure because of you know f uh, uh, things going on around you you don't even recognize that this is an issue <laughs> You can't correct it if you don't know it's an issue. And at times, mm. they don't want to see this as a problem. Yes, they, do, they don't want they to want recognize to that it is. They live in that delusion and they get into it and do it into, you know, detail. At the end, they see there is no way. It's a dead end. Yeah. What do you say, Ahmad? Well, to me, bro brother, when it comes to an empty cup and a full cup, a full cup will be twice as hard to learn something, to admit to something that there is something wrong in the first place. An empty cup is open to learning. But there's a problem that we're facing nowadays is that people don't even know if they're doing the wrong thing or not. They're not even evaluating themselves. They're too busy living lives, but they're not really interested in knowing is this the life that I have to live or not in the first place. So this is why as a Muslim, as we started with the topic, we said the, the mindset of a Muslim is that our the, the basis of our creed, the basis of our judgment, the basis of our lifestyle is the Quran. So those who do not base the Qur'an in the first place as their first floor, they will never go to the second, third or the fourth floor of the building. So when it comes to evaluation or analysis, if a person 
He just needs to wear the right glasses. Sure. He just needs to see the, the flaws, the defaults of which he needs to fix in the first place. Right. Mm. And to me, uh, um, the Quran is that the, the, the appropriate glasses of which I see life. Mm. And the and beauty is, mm. the beauty is, it does not disconnect you from the enjoyment of this world. Definitely. The yeah. youth, they think religion means seriousness. There is no, you know, scope yes. for enjoyment. There is no family. There is no uh, relations. Only, you know, worship I of Allah. I, I, I mean, I, I want to add something because th this is very important. Because I was just talking to this recently, that they have the idea that when you become a Muslim, you have to change who you are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who your likes and who you have to completely mold yourself and, and you feel as if you're living someone else's life. And this is so far from what the religion is. Exactly. If you look at the Sahaba, you will find personalities across the spectrum. They didn't change who their core are. They just changed small things that they needed to change for the religion. They still thought some of them were funny, some were serious. They didn't go through a complete transformation as far as changing who they really are. Like we're all individuals and Absolutely. we're all different. Absolutely. And they, and they, they used to tend to have this idea mm. that they think that everybody who follows the deen is this certain way. <laughs> yes. In all aspects of your how you are, you're this way. Yes. And that's not so far from the truth. Yeah, subhanAllah. Yeah, I, I just need to add something here like to uh, the brother Idris. I understand that there's a lot of scientific ways, uh, scientific methodologies, approaches to handle or even to manage the problems that you have, like the way called SMART. You have to uh, be specific, uh, put your uh, goal in an achievable way, um, measurable way, realistic, and timetable, and so on and so forth. But the whole matter is, this is when it comes to practical life. What about like the problem, maybe a lot of people, a lot of views, maybe in a lot of countries, in the Middle East countries, in Arab countries, have problems regarding psychological problems because they, they have a lot of depression according to the surround, uh, like the circumstances which are surrounding them. How can they overcome, this is my point, how can they overcome uh, like the psychological problems they have in order to um, surpass the barriers or even to get or to reach the goal? Exactly. Now, this, this brings to a very significant point, yes. and that is the identity crisis. You know, the Muslim today, the youth in particular, they lost the ideals that they have in the past who actually faced all these situations. These challenges are not new. These problems are not, you know, uh, new to, to the Ummah. It has been there since time immemorial. And the best approach to overcome this is to go back to those ideals and see their lives. Mm. The problem is we have wrong ideals to look at. As a result, we get into a problem and that problem leads to another problem and then we end up with a lot of problems. So the idea is to know the ideals, especially as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The youth needs to understand that Islam is very natural. You know, it's very pragmatic. It's very much related to your daily lives. It's not something bookish. It is something which mm. is practiced. And that's exactly what Aisha radiallahu anha, mm -hmm. she said, Kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His life was like the Quran. So the idea is, when we go back to the Prophet's life, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets it up as the best example for us to follow until eternity, which means we can face this as a, uh, you know, the problem of psychology, we can face the problem of family problems, we can face the problem of finance, we can face all kinds of problems, right? Do you have a story or an incident from either the Quran or Sunnah? Um, that may be dealt with a taboo issue or an issue, for example, um, you know, of priorities that, you know, these are some challenges that we have that the youth face nowadays. So can you shed some light or share a story that? Sure. Now, that, that uh, you know, bri uh, brings uh, the attention to our mind uh, to look at the success stories. You know, in every field we yeah. have success stories, you know, in the business, in the academics, in everywhere we mm -hmm. have success stories. So we, alhamdulillah, the ummah is blessed with so many success stories, especially when we look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the way he dealt different goals based on the priority. So he has, when we actually study the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pertaining to goal setting, we see that his success story tells us that he has a spirituality goal. So he has that engagement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that goes very powerful. That gives the energy to 
take care of the family goals, right? And that also helps him to understand that there is the means that are required for him to suffice himself and the family. And that goes to the financial goals. And that's how he taught the Sahaba. That's how the, they became the people who actually transformed, you know, the ummah and the world at large. So, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he worked on the priorities. He worked spirituality. Mm -hmm. He worked on the family level. He worked at the social level. He worked at, you know, the uh, finance level. He worked at the enjoyment level. He used to enjoy as well. The youth needs to understand the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He enjoyed his life. Alhamdulillah. Uh, although we know that the, he was given the biggest task mm -hmm. that no Ambiya had given in the past. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him as the messenger for the whole of humanity until eternity. So you can imagine the humongous task that was there on his shoulder. But at the same time, Allah he did not lose his focus on his family. When it comes to family, he used to forget the outside world completely. That's mm -hmm. family goals. When it comes to, you know, taking care of the children, he was the best father. So we have that, that success story in the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So much so that, that, you know, people in Mecca, at the time where he was going in, you know, in a hardship, they offered him everything, the best of the, you know, fame, status, women, everything. What they want to offer, they offered. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, spirituality goal was not disturbed. So the, the relevance that today that we can take in our daily lives, when it comes to the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no compromise. When it comes to taking care of the family, focus needs to be there. When it comes to earning, my mindset should be there. And that's how we actually move on. What do you say, uh, Mustafa? Well, to me, uh, brother, when it comes to the Prophet every personality in the world, they need a role model and they need some practical method of practicing what we call or tend to, uh, tend to seek happiness. Uh, people think that, you know, because I have to be religious and looking at the Prophet ﷺ, as you have stated before, that it's going to be a boring life. You know, we used to undergo a phase called Islamophobia. Now we're going through a, a phase, sadly, uh, Islamo-boring regarding the youth mm. today. Yeah. They think that Islam is boring. And if we look at it psychologically, Boredom is a symptom of which is practiced of a certain habit. A habit is, uh, is uh, in particular is being practiced in the first place. So if you are not that actually lead them, I, I, of course, yeah. But if, if how can you say Islam is boring or Islam is not the way of happiness if you have not practiced in the first place? You how? cannot judge it unless you practice it. Very and, true. and if you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, people think that he would distinguish or distinct between uh, spirituality and life. No, no, uh, uh, the, the essence of Islam is not to cancel out anything it's at all. It's an integrated mm. model. That's, that's the thing. Mm. You're, you're commanded by Allah to, uh, to, to, to reach out to your family, to reach out to the, 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 uh, the kinsmen <coughs> of your family, to reach out to your friends. Even the daughters and children after the death of their parents, they are commanded by Allah to reach out to the friends of the parents. Alhamdulillah. So, this is, so imagine Islam is actually ordering you to become a multitasking individual of society. Alhamdulillah. Mm. And I uh, think uh, we are mm. almost at the end oh. of the, the, the uh, I know there are so many <laughs> things that we need to discuss, <laughs> yeah. but uh, viewers, I'm sure, I'm sure that you are started to enjoying it, started to benefiting yourself, inshallah. We all are benefiting from each other. I'm sure you are benefiting too. Uh, we'll take this, inshallah, uh, carrying on this beautiful and, you know, the journey that we have embarked, uh, Youth Matters. Uh, inshallah, we shall come back in the next episode talking about a different topic as, uh, you know, uh, uh, which will be very significant again for the Youth Matters. Inshallah, till then, we uh, take care, uh, uh, you know, from this, uh, uh, when we leave this, uh, this show, inshallah. جزاكم الله خيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين.